On today's episode, I'll talk about why I started a podcast. You're listening to the Pharmacist Voice Podcast, a journey-style podcast about my career change from pharmacist to voice actor. I'm your host, Kim Newlove. I alternate solo shows and interview shows. The solo shows are about my career change, and the interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate, educate, or entertain. I specialize in medical narration and e-learning. If you have a project in mind, contact me through my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. That's thepharmacist, with an S, voice.com. Thank you for joining me for episode 24. Today, I'll tell you why I started a podcast. There are two main reasons. One, I was encouraged by another pharmacist podcaster, and two, My podcast is a business tool. Here's the longer version. When I was at the second annual Metapreneurs Conference in 2019, one of the sessions was led by Dr. Erin L. Albert. I'll refer to her as Dr. Albert. Now, let me give you some context. Dr. Albert is a pharmacist, an entrepreneur, and a podcaster. She wears a lot of other hats, but I won't get into those. Now, the Metapreneurs Conference is a business conference for pharmacist entrepreneurs and healthcare entrepreneurs. Websites for Metapreneurs and Dr. Albert are both in the show notes for episode 24. Check those out. Dr. Albert's talk was about becoming a thought leader through writing and publishing. She also mentioned that podcasting can help you become a thought leader. As a matter of fact, she encouraged me to start a podcast. Thanks, Dr. Albert. As I record this podcast, it's June 25th, 2020. What I'm talking about happened 14 months ago. At that time, I barely knew what a podcast was. I barely listened to them either. Audiobooks were more my thing. Boy, has that changed. Now I listen to both. I don't know that I ever would have looked into podcasting myself if it weren't for Dr. Albert. I didn't understand how podcasting could help my career and I didn't know how to start a podcast. Why start a podcast then? Well, when a successful pharmacist entrepreneur gives you advice, it's important to at least consider it. Plus, I wanted to see if she was right. Should I start a podcast? The second reason why I started a podcast has to do with my business, The Pharmacist Voice. When I tried to connect podcasting and being a thought leader to my business, it didn't make sense to me. It didn't fit because I was so early in my voiceover career. How could I become a thought leader already? But I kept an open mind and I researched podcasting more. Eventually, I learned that I could use my podcast as a business tool. In episode two of this podcast, I talked about my podcast research just a little bit. Feel free to check out episode two. If you haven't heard it, I'll summarize episode two by saying that my research led me to Dave Jackson and the School of Podcasting. I listened to about 50 of Dave Jackson's podcasts last summer, and they were very helpful. Dave became the guide in my podcasting journey. I signed up for his online course at schoolofpodcasting.com in October of 2019, and I built the podcast in November. Then I launched it on December 4th. Because I already knew how to record, edit, and produce audio from my voiceover industry training, building a podcast using Dave Jackson's process was pretty straightforward. All I had to do was come up with a name, a format, and the other details. I'm oversimplifying this, I know, but it really was pretty straightforward for me. This episode won't dig into all those details I had to come up with, but I will say that if you are interested in starting a podcast, I would recommend doing three things. First, join the School of Podcasting. Second, listen to the School of Podcasting podcast. And three, read Kristen Meinzer's book. The title's, So, You Want to Start a Podcast? Finding Your Voice, Telling Your Story, and Building a Community That Will Listen. It's a great book. During my research about podcasts, I learned that there's more than one podcast format. Did you know that there's more than one podcast format? I don't want to sound like a list machine here, but there are roundtables, daily news shows, list shows, advice shows, 
recap shows, documentary shows, fiction shows, and so many more. None of those really appealed to me. When I thought about what I was doing, it boiled down to this. I was a pharmacist entrepreneur learning how to become a voice actor, audiobook narrator, and so on. One day, I heard about journey-style podcasts. That's a format using story to tell how somebody got from point A to point B and what they learned. In my case, I was on a journey from pharmacist to voice actor. It was easy to pick the journey-style format for my podcast. No matter which format a podcaster uses, they use their voice to communicate. A journey-style podcast would allow me to share how I use my voice as a pharmacist, where my journey took me, who I met along the way, and how they use their voices too. It was a great choice for me. Something important to know is that the Pharmacist Voice podcast is a podcast, not a statue. Down the road, I might change the format of the podcast to something else, like an advice show. And that's okay to do. You might be thinking, Kim, you still haven't explained how a podcast can be a business tool. I'm getting there. What I learned from both Dave Jackson and Kristen Meinzer's book is that I can use my podcast to get the word out about my business. I'm a pharmacist, voice actor, and audiobook narrator. When I put that out into the world on a podcast, I position myself as those things for the world to see. I kind of am positioning myself as an expert. That's how it's a business tool. I may have accidentally become a thought leader, too, because people interested in doing what I do contact me all the time. During my career, both pharmacy and voiceover, I have met all kinds of people. I use my interview shows every other week to help them share how they use their voices as well. Here are 11 examples. Episode 3 with Tom Titkemeyer. He's my uncle who introduced me to the pharmacy profession in the first place, back in 8th grade. Episode 5 was with Harold Kinker, my first boss at Walgreens in 2002. Episode 7 was with Nate Kellmeyer, a friend I met through the Wood County Addiction Task Force. Episode 9 was with Dr. Asha Bohannon, a friend and pharmacist entrepreneur who I met at the very first ever Metapreneurs Conference in 2018. Episode 11 was with Sue Paul and Michelle Fritch, co-founders of the Metapreneurs Conference. Episode 13 was with Dr. Bruce Berger, motivational interviewing expert, and I met him through the Metapreneurs organization also. Episode 15 was with Dr. Lisa Orbe Austin, a counseling psychologist and author I met on LinkedIn. She's an expert on imposter syndrome, which I actually struggle with. Episode 17 was with Dave Bitkowski, an Ohio pharmacist, entrepreneur, and rare disease advocate. Episode 19 was with Patty Welton, a rare disease advocate and founder and CEO of Beyond the Diagnosis. Episode 21 was with Long Haul Paul, also known as Paul Pelland, a New Hampshire man with multiple sclerosis who raises awareness about multiple sclerosis through long distance motorcycling. And finally, episode 23 was with Dr. Anna Garrett, a hormone expert and author of Perimenopause, The Savvy Sister's Guide to Hormone Harmony. This is episode 24, and my next four interview shows are all planned out. Let me tell you about them. Episode 25 will be next Friday, July 3rd, 2020. My guest is Dr. Muhammad Umar Hafiz, a pharmacist with an MBA living in Abu Dhabi, which is located in the United Arab Emirates, or UAE. He's a telepharmacy advocate, and his practice sites include oil rigs, both onshore and offshore, remote sites in the desert, deep sea platforms, oil barges, and natural and man-made islands in the Arabian Gulf. Episode 27 will be on Friday, July 17th. My guest will be Dr. Wendy Steffen, PhD. She's an educator and epidemiologist with South Florida's Poison Control Center. Episode 29 will be on Friday, July 31st. Dr. Jerika Dodd will be my guest. She's a pharmacist entrepreneur, and we met in April 2018 at the very first Metapreneurs Conference in Asheville, North Carolina. And finally, episode 31 will be on Friday, August 14th. My guest will be Dr. Ali Zhu, a registered pharmacist from Australia. 
She's a holistic health coach and life coach specializing in emotional intelligence and the mind-body connection. In closing, I started my podcast because I was encouraged by another pharmacist podcaster and I wanted to use my podcast as a business tool. I am so happy with how my podcast turned out. I get to share my journey. No one else has the exact same set of variables in their life that I have. I have a husband and two kids who I built my entire voiceover career around. Three months ago, COVID changed my life. The job I planned to do in the margins when my kids were at school got interrupted. I had to homeschool my kids. Then my husband lost his job on May 1st. You just can't make this stuff up. I got the green light to work on my voiceover business full time, but now he's interviewing for jobs. It's life, it's interesting, and it's my journey. Join me next week on Friday, July 3rd for my interview with Dr. Muhammad Umar Hafiz. Then check out my next solo episode on Friday, July 10th. Hit the subscribe button and you'll get the podcast every week when it drops each Friday. Thank you for joining me for episode 24 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Visit thepharmacistvoice.com to subscribe and read the show notes. That's thepharmacist with an S, voice.com.